Hey, what's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Elric Ferris, Editor-in-Chief here at Motherboards.org. Well, today I got a subject that might get a lot of heated comment. Should you buy AMD or should you buy Intel? Right there, you open a whole floodgate of stuff because people start saying, oh, you're a hater, you're a fanboy, you're this or that. But traditionally, Intel has always had its place as the high-end dominant CPU. So basically, if you want a CPU that's the highest end performance, offers usually the most flexibility in overclocking, and usually has the most features, that's traditionally been Intel. Now, AMD has kicked Intel's ass in the past when they released the AMD 64. AMD actually took the forefront for a while and had the 64-bit CPUs available before Intel and was working with Microsoft long before they were. Now, Intel, on the other hand, just kind of kicked back and waited until the technology was all developed for all these programs and then just bopped onto the market with a 64-bit CPU. So when you're sitting at home and you want to buy something, you're wondering, AMD, Intel? Really, what it comes down to most of the time is what you're doing and how much money you want to invest. AMD is always known to have CPUs that are a much lower price point on the market than Intel. Now, are they always as competitive as Intel? Do some of their CPUs go as fast as Intel's CPU? Do the overclocking? No, that's not true. But if you wanna save money and get something that runs for you, there is absolutely nothing wrong with AMD CPUs. If somebody from the Intel tells you that they are just old crap CPUs, that's not true in any way. AMD CPUs run just fine. We don't review very many of them here on motherboards.org just because AMD support has kind of like just waned. So we don't really focus on them anymore. And AMD, if you happen to be watching this, we're willing to work with you more if you work with us. Just a plug right there to let you know. But AMD CPUs, there's nothing wrong with them. But Intel CPUs have always traditionally and still to this day offer the highest in extreme CPUs. If you're looking for the CPU that has the absolute most power, most flexibility, but it's gonna contain the higher price tag, this is an Intel CPU. If you go into the mid-range CPU group, they're gonna compete very, very levelly. But at the end of the day, what it really seems, when I get email or anything else, it seems to be that the AMD fans are the people who value budget. Saving money, hey, my stuff really runs good. The Intel crowd, they're kind of a different crowd. The Intel people are almost kind of like, you know, almost the snooty crowd of the PC world. I've got my Intel, it's cool. But at the end of the day, when you want to make a buying decision, you need to just think about what it is that you need for your system. I mean, if you've only got $500 and you don't play really high-end games, there are very many solutions by AMD that will suit your need. If you're somebody who's going to do power computing and you're going to be doing a bunch of AutoCAD and all these kind of things, you're kind of going to be leaning more towards an Intel CPU. End of the day, it's your choice. AMD has always stood for budget. It's still that way. Intel has always stood for the highest end. I hope that explains a lot. I hope I don't get a bunch of haters in there. If you really pay attention to the video and listen to my words, I'm not against anybody. I'm just breaking it down, really, in the reality of how these companies have been separated. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys out on YouTube.